I'm trying to apply this to data management. I know this is an area I'd love to uh, get more and more involved in, in terms of the knowledge management of data management. So without much ado, I'll hand over to Karen, all yours. Karen. Welcome. Introducing Karen Olivia, passionate about data and everything related to it. She's a data management and strategy consultant at Dimension Data. This is the future rave sound. I'm getting lost in an underground. This is the future rave sound. I'm getting lost in an underground. The ability to create new content by utilizing current text, audio files, and images. The ability to create new content by utilizing current text, audio files, and images. This is the future rave sound. Hi there. If anyone no. can see me. <laughs> so just yes, for the. Everything that uh, I just showed was all generated through AI, with the exception of David Geta himself. Um, the m, &M sound uh, was not generated by m, m It was done by David. He's in big trouble for it, um, but uh, for me it's good. I was always wanted to be introduced by the Terminator, so that's checked. Um, and I wanted to be a DJ and DJing with a very famous DJ, so that's also a checkbox. Um, the other thing that was not um, computer generated was uh, my shoes. Everyone that knows me will know those pink shoes or the pink laces anyway. But yeah, that was me um, on the farm, just sitting around there and thinking. I think most of my job is to think um, rather uh, about the future and what's happening. So let's quickly see what um, happened with David. Um, I am going to turn off my camera because there's a few videos and I'm just a little bit hesitant of my bandwidth. So I'm turning this off then. Okay. So first of all, um, David Guetta used m, &M um, and on his set, and the people went nuts. Now, I, if you know Eminem, he's not really a rave person. He, he he's more a rapper. Um, but this was done by artificial intelligence. Um, the voice and the lyrics was created by AI. So in the news, um, the vo it it just goes on, um, just talking about the fake Eminem vocals and he makes a big comment that the future of music is in AI. Now that's a, for a musician to make that comment is it's it's quite a, a strong comment to make. So um he's in trouble now <laughs> in court um because of copyright what is copyrighted what not i think we can uh, keep an eye on this story and see what is going to happen um with this because eminem is really upset about it now what uh, what you guys don't know is a section of that um song is actually not even david Guetta's work it is mine <laughs> that i did yesterday so um i'm just going to go a little bit back to the video again let me just get to that portion uh, so the vocals let me play come on play now this is the future this is still um david guetta and m, &M. the next view is telling you what generative ai is the ability to create new content by utilizing current text, audio files, and images. So those those last few um, words is basically what I added in yesterday. So it is that easy, and it is real, and it is today. It is not next year. It is not back to the future type of things. It is real. So. If we talk about generative AI, um, yes, it is. We all know now about ChatGPT and we know about Bot. Um, everything is in the news, but it's basically based all on generative AI. So I'm going to focus more on that 
because ChatGPT and, and the other things are sitting on top of it. I'm not putting down ChatGPT at all, but it sits on top of that, and behind that sits data. So we'll get to that just uh, layer by layer. So um, I also wanted to be an artist always. So this is my painting made by artificial intelligence. I asked it to, it didn't really listen. I said, create a robot painting a photo uh, or a picture uh, in oil painting. So it didn't really understand, but maybe it's, you know, the way you type it. So that's very important is you need to know how to ask the question. So I, I got quite pretty close to it um, by typing what I needed. So let's go and ask ChatGPT ourselves. Um, what is um, the AI? So, I asked it a question, what is generative AI? Um, sorry, it's a, it's a bit small. <laughs> um, the answer, and you can see it didn't think too long. Um, this is chat GPT or GPT 3.5 still. Um, it gives you a long story and for people that is a bit lazy. Um, it might be a, a bit much to read, or if you if you're not if you're not used to AI, there's still a lot of information in the neural networks, deep learning, data sets, output. So I asked it to explain it in simple terms as you would with a four-year-old, five-year-old. I couldn't decide, so I decided on five-year-old, and this is what I liked. Um, now, I've asked the question a few times and it gave me a few answers, the same concept, but it gave me a few answers and I like this one the most. So it's like a smart robot that can make new pictures, songs and stories by looking at a lot of old ones. <laughs> so if we, basically the official definition is that it can generate new content by looking at text, audio files and image. So ChatGPT did pretty well with its explanation to say make new pictures, songs and stories by looking at a lot of old ones. So it goes on to like explain to a five year old. Um, it's when you draw a picture um, and you use your imagination to make something new. So this is now very, very basic, if I can say that, but this is the crux of it, and this is for the layman, I think, what caught up with, with everything. We'll go further into um, into exactly how that happens. Um, please interrupt me if there's anything. I can't really see whose hands up and who's not. So, yeah, but let's go on. Um, now, Karen, I'll monitor, the, I'll monitor the chat for you, Karen, and I'll just uh, make you. you aware. Thank you very much. So if we if we were have a look at the news now, in the news, a lot has happened, and this is just articles from the last two days around generative AI, and Adobe has caught on. So that is amplifying your creativity. Um, ChatGPT um, talks, or, or this is. Um, business news talks about losing your job, basically. I'm summarizing. Um, if it's today or tomorrow. Um, okay, but then on the flip side, it says that it can ease workload on teachers. So a lot of questions is still not answered in what will be the effect. Um, this this is just rewriting uh, a recap, and I have actually done that. I took a Teams meetings transcription, um, and I posted pasted it into ChatGPT, and I asked for a summary, and it did okay. Given South African uh, accents, Teams doesn't normally transcribe it that good, but it it went okay. Then. Um, Salesforce calls it a superpower, um, generative AI, and Bart, which is the Google's generative AI answer to ChatGPT, um, says it's going to revolutionize healthcare, which is all, if you look at when Bart was um, announced, they also announced their image search functionality, and then OpenAI with GPT now 
announced um, that there will also be images involved. So yeah, you could technically, if you if you want to think about that, you will have a photo of someone and you can already start to diagnose what's going on. Um, any comments on, on this so far? Questions or comments? Any comments on this so far? Byron, so uh, just to just to ask you, there's quite a lot in the news about um, micro, uh, Microsoft's integration of that into Bing and its ability to compete with Google. Uh, I don't know if you've seen any of that. Have you tried any of the, the new functionality that Bing has now with this integration and what the differences are? I don't think um, Bing is there yet. Um, it, it's, I mean, the integration is there, but it is, um, if you actually look at it, Bing takes, so so how a how chat GPT specifically works is it, it takes words. So you give it the sentence and it takes um, important words out and then it throws it into the models to now generate something. So the way I see Bing doing it and, I, and, and, and they, Microsoft's also not really telling us how they are doing it or planning to do it, is they're currently just creating those search terms for you and just anyways pumping it through Bing. Um, and in the in the video, a, a little bit later, you'll see how much it takes to quickly actually teach your, your models um, to, to um, give you the information. So if I, I, um, create a website today, it doesn't mean it's going to, at the moment, necessarily be in the model tomorrow. Okay, yeah. And um, there's, there's someone, there's a question from Sandra, Sandra, Sandy. Uh, hi, Howard. My question hi. is on ChatGPT, uh, Karin. You find all the information we are getting from it is quite old. So I say old because if we look at the amount of information produced between 2021 and now, um, it's quite a lot. However, when you research or ask ChatGPT questions, it gives you answers from 2021 going backwards. Would you know if um, OpenAI's got and Microsoft's got plans to catch up with that and when they intend to do that? Because it becomes futile if you're doing research and you want the latest information and all you keep getting is in 1921, in 19, sorry, in 2021, in 2019, and nothing from the past year or two years. Yeah, so um, um, open AI is not for profit anymore. Um, yeah, ach, ach, not, it's not a non-profit anymore. So it used to be. And basically what they are now doing with Microsoft is you're going to pay. So I think it was ChatGPT4 or with GPT4 is um, they've already added some additional information. When you look at the Microsoft Azure portions of um, integration into your, um, your own data, so your organizational data, there's also cost involved and, and to train it. So what they've done, it's very, very clever. Um, is they've put out GPT 3.5 for, for public. And I'm just going to move on to the next slide so you can see some dates. Um, 3.5 for the public in 2022. Now, if you actually have a look at the, at the screen, you will see there's a thumbs up button on the right hand side. And that assisted um, OpenAI to, to help the models to learn. So that's assisted learning. So you as a consumer then went, ah, oh, this is a nice answer. And that basically taught um, the model further. So to answer your question, Sandy, it is yes, there is definitely plans. The question just now is how will they do that? Because they, are, um, they never divulge because they 150 terabytes or something like that data that they pushed in and text data, so you know that's a lot of data, um, and how they're going to now scan the internet. Um, that's what Microsoft and OpenAI is looking at, and they're not divulging at the moment what they're specifically doing. 
Um, there were another person that also had hand Yes, up. There's, another, there's another question from Matt. He said, how is OpenAI going to coexist with data privacy? Yeah, we'll get to that a bit later. Okay. It's, a, it's a very, very then, important one. Yeah, we'll right, and then I think Paul Krupp is asking if, uh, I think there may be some feedback coming through your speakers. Oh, okay, um, I'm on a headset. Uh, is everyone here? Uh, I'm, just, uh, I'm just picking up, uh, there's an actual, not echo, it's a delay coming through your own speakers, but maybe it's, uh, maybe it's just me. I'm also no, it is. It is. Okay. Um, right. see. Whilst you whilst you're looking for that, let's ask Gashay. We do. You got a question? Hi. Um. Thank you for this presentation. This is excellent. Um. Information. Um. My my question is related to ethics. Um. So so are you going to address ethics as a part of your presentation, or may I ask a question now? Yeah, I think let's hold that to the last. Okay. Um, can you guys hear better now? Yes, that's better. Okay. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's, still, it's yeah. still relaying. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's back again. Um, I don't know, actually, no. Okay, let me let me continue to the next um, portion. I'm just going to yeah. do this and then I'm going to have a proper look. Um, so, underneath all of... Um, the AI portions and chat GPT and BART, there is deep learning. So deep learning, the first major thing that happened was in 2016 with AlphaGo, and then post that was OpenAI that was recently now. So I just want to, the next video, I just want to show you what happened with AlphaGo, which was amazing. That was one of the first deep learning success public successes, let's say that. There, there was a lot of academic successes, but I think this was one of the public successes. And if you actually, um, funny story, Elon Musk started both companies. Um, and I'm just gonna go on to the next one, and then I'll put myself on mute and see what's happening. So it's not a long video. Can you hear? It's a bit softer. Yes. And AlphaGo just a play. It don't think about the, the opening it will be there or not. So, I Jeff sees AlphaGo plays a move 37, and I Jeff puts a stone in the board. Wow, really? Really? Yeah. Value. Ooh. That's a very that's Ooh. a very surprising move. I thought I thought it was I thought it was a mistake. When I see this move, for me it's just the big shock. What? Normally human we never play this one because it's bad. It's just bad. We don't know why. It's bad. But it's a little bit high. Yeah. It's fifth line. Normally you don't make a shoulder here on the fifth line. Um, so coming on top of a fourth line stone is really unusual. Yeah, that's an exciting move. Mm -hmm. I, I think we've seen an original move here. That's the kind of move uh, that, you, that you play go for. Hey. Interesting stuff. This fifth line shoulder head. Yeah. I wasn't expecting that. Um, I don't really know if it's a good or bad move at this point. The professional commentators almost unanimously said that not a single human player would have chosen move 37. So I actually had a poke around in AlphaGo to see what AlphaGo thought. And AlphaGo actually agreed with that assessment. AlphaGo said there was a one in 10,000 probability that move 37 would have been played by a human player. So it knew that this was an extremely unlikely move. It went beyond its human guide and it came up with something new and, and creative and different. I am very much watching the game through these commentators. That's the way it works. So when they're confused, I'm certainly confused. At the same time, I'm latching on to the fact that, that they are confused, right? That is, that is an interesting moment. When everyone else is confused, who's not confused, right? Besides the machine. I want to see Lise Dahl when he sees this move.
He's back, Liam's back. Alpago는 사실은 확률적 계산을 하고 그냥 이기기 위한 그런 머신에 불과하다고 생각을 했었는데 그 수를 보는 순간 아니구나 충분히 알파고도 창기적이다 어, 정말 아름답고 음, 바둑의 그런 아름다움을 잘 표현할 수 있고 굉장히 창기적인 수였다 Normally you have to think about one, two minutes no. Okay, can you guys hear me again? No, no, I can see, I can see how it, but yes. I can't hear you. Okay. Yes. I oh, know how it's yes. on mute. Okay. Is it better though? Yeah. Yes, okay. I, don't, I don't hear a, uh, a, okay. a, a echo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I just, better. thank you. I just turned the headset off and on, so that's mm. all I could do. Um, yeah, so this was, uh, Lisa Doll uh, with versus Alpha Go with the game Go. I have no idea how to play it, um, but that was quite a breakthrough um, in the AI world. He, he he was or is the world champion at that stage, and he lost because um, it was based out of five. He did win one game, I think, if I recall correctly, um, but the machine won the rest. Now, if you if you have a have a think about it and, and some of the things that in, in a smaller scale that we have been doing and that makes me proud to be South African as well is I don't know how many people know that we are supporting all the data science and analytics for the Tour de France from Bryanston um, mm. and or when you look at it top 10 in the race, those statistics and everything come from here. Um, so it is, it is, it is, we've got the talent and everything. And when I was on on the bus at the Tour de France, um, we were still in testing at, at that stage with these algorithms. And, and it literally, it was two A4 papers, man against the machine. So we would <laughs> have the, whatever the AI engine popped out, um, and we would have some cycle experts give their opinions, and we were basically there um, with just the data from previous races. So learning, learning basically from the past, which is actually a very human thing. So this was then AlphaGo, um, move 37. So this is all based on deep learning. Now, um, like I said, I'm an artist, so this is also done by me um, with um, also open AI portion that creates um, images. Now, I think if I, this is a question I asked was a person studying against the clock. Now, what, what this does, um, algorithm does, is it actually, predicts the next pixel, which is exactly the same what ChatGPT is also doing. It takes a sentence and it predicts the next word that's going to be there. That's simplistically what it does. 
So same with this image. Now you can see uh, this guy's ear is not too well done and the hands is a bit odd, but I think it's pretty amazing because it just literally took a, a bank of pictures and it created a brand new one. And if I ask the same question, it will give different answers. It will not pop up with this. Now there's an, an, an there's, there's also with the ethics thing. Um, there's also now interesting things about copyright. Can AI images now be copyrighted or not? Um, so a lot of a lot of talks around these things are also happening. Eminem's voice <laughs> in music, images that's generated. Because um, maybe my photos got this one's here, your photos from the clock. How 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 do you how do you generate that? So um, the next portion is then I'm just going to show, and I know it's a lot of videos, but I can't explain it as, as easily as as these guys. Um, for the main reason that it is such complex, it's very complicated, and to start drilling through it, it's going to take a few few sessions. So just a, a quick summary on deep learning. Um, do anyone, do everyone or anyone know what is deep learning? Or what do you think it is? No, okay. Then definitely let's have a video because um, I'm not a data scientist PhD student. So <laughs> I, I, I think this is the best way to I, I, I learn by videos. So I'm just going to go to the next one. Um, I can I can share all these links. Um, I, in, I have all of them in reference. So here we go. Ever go wondered how Google translates an entire web page to a different language in a matter of seconds or your phone gallery groups images based on their location? All of this is a product of deep learning. But what exactly is deep learning? Deep learning is a subset of machine learning, which in turn is a subset of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is a technique that enables a machine to mimic human behavior. Machine learning is a technique to achieve AI through algorithms trained with data. And finally, deep learning is a type of machine learning inspired by the structure of the human brain. In terms of deep learning, this structure is called an artificial neural network. Let's understand deep learning better and how it's different from machine learning. Say we create a machine that could differentiate between tomatoes and cherries. If done using machine learning, we'd have to tell the machine the features based on which the two can be differentiated. These features could be the size and the type of stem on them. With deep learning, on the other hand, the features are picked out by the neural network without human intervention. Of course, that kind of independence comes at the cost of having a much higher volume of data to train our machine. Now, let's dive into the working of neural networks. Here, we have three students. Each of them write down the digit nine on a piece of paper. Notably, they don't all write it identically. The human brain can easily recognize the digits. But what if a computer had to recognize them? That's where deep learning comes in. Here's a neural network trained to identify handwritten digits. Each number is present as an image of 28 times 28 pixels. Now, that amounts to a total of 784 pixels. Neurons, the core entity of a neural network, is where the information processing takes place. Each of the 784 pixels is fed to a neuron in the first layer of our neural network. This forms the input layer. On the other end, we have the output layer with each neuron representing a digit with the hidden layers existing between them. The information is transferred from one layer to another over connecting channels. Each of these has a value attached to it and hence is called a weighted channel. All neurons have a unique number associated with it called bias. This bias is added to the weighted sum of inputs reaching the neuron which is then applied to a function known as the activation function. The result of the activation function determines if the neuron gets activated. Every activated neuron passes on information to the following layers. This continues up till the second last layer. The one neuron activated in the output layer corresponds to the input digit. 
The weights and bias are continuously adjusted to produce a well-trained network. So, where is deep learning applied? In customer support. When most people converse with customer support agents, the conversation seems so real, they don't even realize that it's actually a bot on the other side. In medical care, neural networks detect cancer cells and analyze MRI images to give detailed results. Self-driving cars. What seemed like science fiction is now a reality. Apple, Tesla, and Nissan are only a few of the companies working on self-driving cars. So, deep learning has a vast scope, but it too faces some limitations. The first, as we discussed earlier, is data. While deep learning is the most efficient way to deal with unstructured data, a neural network requires a massive volume of data to train. Let's assume we always have access to the necessary amount of data. Processing this is not within the capability of every machine. And that brings us to our second limitation, computational power. Training a neural network requires graphical processing units, which have thousands of cores as compared to CPUs. And GPUs are, of course, more expensive. And finally, we come down to training time. Deep neural networks take hours or even months to train. The time increases with the amount of data and number of layers in the network. So okay. So I think that also answers the, the one question about um, when will the rest of the two years data go in? It should be just noted that it takes some time to train. So they need to get that right um, or just get a, a, a huge amount of computing power, which they do have, as GPT is now the biggest network or the most complex neural network in the world. Um, it had 17 billion parameters and GPT-4, um, so that they, they, they say it's 4 trillion, but uh, the CEO from OpenAI did not want to comment on it. So um, they, 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 at the moment, we, we're still not sure if they're going to release a white paper on GPT-3.5. Um, we will have to see how they, what's going to happen there. Um, Ever one. So I'm going to stop there before we go into the next section. Um, questions, queries, comments. Do everyone know what's deep learning? Can I now go home? Well, I am home, but um, <laughs> I think the video, showing a video is much easier than trying to explain it um, in that sense. But it, 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 it's not sure. Mm -hmm. Corinne, I wondered, I mean, I I didn't pick up all of that, uh, the different layers and the outcomes and inputs and outcomes. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure, I mean, I, I get that what's happening is that these, machine, these machines are learning on their own to detect and discern things without having guidance from humans. That's, uh, is, is that the simplistic answer of it? But I, I really didn't understand that yeah. automated network in terms of what those different layers are doing and, and what are the insights or, or things that are being generated by the... Yeah, so, by the, well, so that it, the, it will, hmm? continue, pardon, sorry. Pardon, about, about the guidance, actually, they need this data, so depending on the data you feed them, you can like even, uh, it's not, they learn, but they learn from some, like uh, from, the, that, that does, in, does feed into them. So, like you support one of the risks, so you you can drive the direction of the learning if you put the selected that the data you want to it to to use for for this learning. Yeah. Uh, so it's it learns by itself, but based on, on the data you give it. You give it, yeah, yeah. That's that's. I think it's okay. an important thing. Yeah. How it works internally, I don't know, but. Mm. So I think yeah. So internally, I mean that is that's the people write PhDs on that. So I'm not. Uh, it's not really necessary to understand that to the granular level, but I think it's it's if you can you can compare it almost to a toddler. So if if a toddler will try something, let's say touch the stove, and burn, and then not do it next time, well we hope, but. Um, 
for instance, with GPT, I think it was 3.5. I might be wrong. It might be 3. The first data that went in was assisted learning. So they um, employed a bunch of graduates um, and a graduate would ask, what color is the sky? And it will come out with purple and then it will say no. It's not purple. And as it kept asking what color is the sky, it kept learning because the answer is no for purple. So let's try pink. Let's try orange based on the data that's going in. So this is a very simplistic thing. So that's what the assisted learning is. And that is where that numbering systems come in. So the numbers is basically your at the end, you get your the the number, the, the algorithm predicts the number, and that number is the probability that that is that item. That makes sense. But it comes from assisted learning um, most of the time. It's like, like I said now with the Tour de France, the first time we did it, it was almost like a, a assisted learning in a sense where we first checked the man against the machine to make sure. Um, that this is in fact the algorithms are working and it learns from there. It's a very complicated thing, but yes, data goes in, it's given a number. Um, when you ask a question, what's the probability of it being that? And it spits out something. If that something is wrong, you tell it, no, it's not correct. And that is where the thumbs up, thumbs down come in ChatGPT, where we as the population can now go, no, it's not right. And then the algorithm learns from that again. That's that's the summary version of it. Does it make sense? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Howard, anything else? Yes, thanks. No, that's that's great. Thanks. Okay. Um, so the impact on data management, again, this picture was created um, by AI. I asked it to give me a, or to combine the stop and go sign. Now, I think it did a pretty okay job. Um, it actually looks pretty funky. Um, and this is what it came up with. It's the stop and Go, yeah. Um, so that's what it came up with. Uh, it is literally just type it in, and there you go. Um, they are getting cleverer. Um, previously, they, they didn't have um, like credits. Now you've got a specific amount of images you can get in a month, and then you have to start paying. So that's that. Um, so if we have a look at the impact on data management now, if if I refer back to the news articles at the way back at the beginning, um, a lot of well, if 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 you had to look a little bit previous, um, further back, there's a lot of worries about job security. I'm not worried about anyone's job security. Um, you are going to have to change, but your job security will be fine if you are able to change. If we have a look at um, history, so first it was only the people that 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 were rich could read, basically. Then the printing press came out. And it was chaos because now I'm a soul, everyone can read, and now everyone's educated. So, what's going to happen now? The reach is now not that re relevant anymore because the rest of the population is educated. Moving along, we got the internet. Um, uh, I don't know, I wasn't born yet now, I'm joking. Um, but you got, you got the internet, and then there was again chaos about that because now everyone else you can now dial in dial up if you've got a landline you can get the internet and so it goes this is one of those um eras or those points in time where we are just again at one of those adapt portions where we now need to adapt um and 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 we'll get to the ethical side and and so forth at the end um, with questions and stuff, because that's also a 
<laughs> within our own it. Um, but yeah, let's quickly have a look on um, the impact on data management. Um, I've only highlighted three because every single slice in the Dharma wheel is impacted. Um, but I think I would like people to also just think a little bit um, when going through the wheels. So here we go. The first one is the data volumes. So if we have a look at the data volumes, um, there's a lot more data that is going to be pushed out and that needs to be quickly pushed out. So, and the amount of training data that's going to be coming in. So your storage and operations needs to be very good. It needs to be fine-tuned. Um, the guys that do that, the data lakes, the just relational databases that go into that, um, all need to be fine-tuned. So I don't see any impact really on, on that perspective, just, you know, focusing. The quality of data, that is very, very, very important. Um, and I think, like Martin said, it is if you push into mis or, or if you tell a child, you give the child five pictures of a rectangle and you tell, keep telling the child it's a circle, it will think it's a circle. And the same for the machine. So your quality of data is, is going to be really top of mind, even more so then because otherwise there's no use in these networks because it can't learn from garbage data. I know the saying is garbage in, garbage out, but now it's going to learn. And if we look at the ethical perspectives now and and, and those type of things, it's going to affect, it's going to start affecting people's lives because there's no one that's going to be able to tell it it's right or wrong. The decision will be made. So that brings me to the third one, which I just want to quickly touch on, which is the governance and the sensitive data. So the machine cannot say what's right and wrong. Okay. So let's say, for instance, you have a call center that sells personal loans and you ask the algorithm to tell me who to phone and it automatically phones. It's not, not giving you a list. Who to phone and what interest rate to give to maximize. And it starts to phone people under minimum income or, or very low income five days before payday. Is it ethical? Mm, don't know. You know, it's it's one of those things. If you're a businessman or woman and you have to make that decision, you will think twice. But the machine don't know. It's just going to say, you ask me, how do I make the most money? And this is how. So um, from a sensitive data perspective, the governance will be very, very, need to be very strict and, and most, if you have a look like um, the open AI portion that's sitting now in Azure, you will look at the co combined products around it to keep sensitive data from going in to the open AI um, service. So you will have, and I'm just using Microsoft for, for as example, um, you will have typically your compliance manager sitting there, stopping data at the gate from going in there. Because once it is, is in the model, it is part of the learning. Um, and, and, and like I say, the, the machine doesn't know right from wrong. And I'm going to pause here quickly for, for comments. Like I say, the machine doesn't know right from wrong. Karen, there is a there is a mess, there's a question from Nasi saying, Karen, are you saying it will impact the marketing uh, industry in terms of the data architecture in the same way? Definitely the marketing architecture, oh, the marketing industry. So um, that nice, I don't know who wrote, who wrote the write up um, on LinkedIn. I thought I was a marketer there. Um, I wrote what I wanted it to say and I popped it into ChatGPT and it wrote it in very nice language for me. Um, much better than what I could ever have done. And if we look at GPT-4, 
Um, again, there's lots of others. I'm just using GPT-4 now because everyone knows about it. If you look at GPT-4, it actually can now include images. And GPT-3.5 in chat GPT, you could already say, give me a presentation for data management focusing on governance. And it would give you slide one and points, slide two and points, slide three and points. But it couldn't make it pretty. But GPT-4, which is now out, but it's a paid, um, paid version, can now do that. Um, which is basically uh, it's affecting, uh, that's why I say it definitely will affect marketing. And with Adobe also jumping on the uh, on the bandwagon for generative AI, we really need to have a look there. I hope that answers the question. Um, okay, Nasid uh, or Nisha, did that answer your question? Yes, it does. The Thank question you. is. Okay, you went on to say the question then is, do we see compliance also being automated in the future to manage this bottleneck? Or is that relating to another uh, No, a comment? different point. Yeah, a different point where she, we can't mention compliance being a gate. Okay. Uh, the governance side of things. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, the, the, yeah. This one is also a very difficult one for me um, because... Um, your compliance is currently managed, and I'm talking Microsoft again, um, through Compliance Manager. So with regards to that, it's already got a bunch of compliance packages, if I can say that, like Poppy, GDPR, and others. Um, I mean, America's got one per state almost, um, and then Howard can tell you a bit about the East. Um, so what well, I, I can say, and I'm, doesn't mean to be this year, maybe in three years' time, five, I don't know, you will have a law coming out and a chat GPT or similar will read the law and create the package and you just apply it. And you could possibly apply it by region. So it checks the data, the data is South African data poppy. It's GDPR is a European citizen, you know. So that, 100%, uh, that's, that's my, I, I, if I can predict, I'm not an AI machine, but if I can predict, that's definitely on its way. Okay, and then we've got a question from Sandy. Thank you. Um, Karen, thanks. This is very informative, hey? And mm. eye-opening. What concerns me the most is the governance aspect, because mm. let's take an organization as big as Microsoft, or and, you know, employees go and get their, especially junior employees, right? Millennials. Yeah. They go, they get their copy from ChatGPT about whatever it is we need done in the organization. Yeah. And chat GPT does not know what's copyrighted or what's not copyrighted, mm. right or wrong. And as an organization, we consume that information, we produce it, mm. we put it on LinkedIn. We are putting it on our website or wherever it is. Um, who's going to be the governance police there, right? Because normally we have, been, we have governance in the organization and I don't think um, companies are ready yet to deal with that kind of governance, first and foremost. And then mm. the second thing is, once it's out there, who controls that, right? Uh, to say, you know, mm. Microsoft on your website, you've got this, it's similar to what's on my website, or it was my copy. Now we are reproducing my stuff and putting it on your website. And I think that's the most, one of the most concerning things for me to say, who's going to own what if there's no control or governance around what chat GPT produces for people. Yeah, so that is um, so. So one thing is, if we there's two two components to this. You've got your um, internal data, so your company data. I work for Dimension Data, so you have your company data. So now that is ring fenced 
um, within Azure because I'm using um, OpenAR servers. It rings fenced within Azure, so Azure is looking at the security for that. Now, if you do, and an, an, um, OpenAR services will not stand alone. Um, I've, I've, I've seen some architecture that how to, or possible implementations of it. It will not stand alone. It will be used as a addition. Okay, so for instance, and I, I, I understand what you, you're getting to. So a, a question that can be asked, let's say you are reporting to me and today you were down at work. So and let's assume we're all going to the office. <laughs> I drive home um, from the office and I'm worried about you. And I tell uh, some app um, that's going to do voice to text. Um, Siri, let's say, let's say Siri. Um, I say, Siri, I'm worried about Sandy. Please give me some history around her leave, sick leave, um, and what could possibly cause it. Okay. Siri comes back, goes into your organizational data, goes and check your HR, goes and checks all over the show, and comes back with Sandy has been off sick every Friday for the last four weeks. And you go, mm, she's having a nice party. Um, but it could be so many other things. So first of all, ChatGPT is now predicting stuff that could not possibly be fine because you're now assuming it's a party it could be anything other someone might have to go for a hospital treatment every friday who knows um so that's the one thing but what you are saying now that information is somewhere on a cell phone or a laptop right so how are you going to stop that from going further out and that is where your end device protection will come in um, so like the Intunes, the, you know, so you can't put a USB stick in your laptop, you can't email this, you can't email that. So that's where that side comes in to protect your organizational data. Now, the data that is out there um, on the internet, it's not governed anyway, except if it's a um, educational uh, uh, academic art article. It's not governed. So from my perspective, you would not have the problem for that. If you want to copy something from a Microsoft website and put it on yours or vice versa, it's fine because it's not IP. It is there free for all. And that's what the current chat GPT um, is using. It is just taking stuff from the internet, which is accessible for me, you, anyone, and putting it there um, in a different way, in a different conversational way. Does that answer your question? I hope so. Okay, then we've got another question from Caroline Mouton. Caroline? Great, hi. <coughs> Um, hey, Karen. Um, I uh, hazard. Um, I just want to say on that cover, uh, I've got two points. I just, just want to just talk about a little bit about the governance conversation that just happened, and then I want to talk about the uh, data quality thing in my head. Is so with governance, um, I think we have enough controls out there. I think that we just need to be um, educated on the technology. I, th I think the controls are good. I think, for example, um, automated decision making should we should we provide someone with an interest rate? That interest rate example you gave, um, that's already governed under automated decision making. Um, my, and and maybe something like Azure, the, you know, the the compliance um, back end maybe of Microsoft 365 or whatever, or Azure. Um, you know, should be maybe used to monitor for compliance rules like that. Like, so, you know, are we creating a tool whose purpose is going to be to make decisions and, you know, do we have or a manual intervention? <clears throat> so, I, and then also with things like with mobile devices, if you're going to be asking about HR, you know, related um, 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 questions, into, you know, into an app, there should be whitelisted apps, you know, like you're not allowed to act, you know, you're not allowed to use any AI tool that isn't whitelisted by the organization. So you're not allowed to use a free tool to talk about other people or to to generate information about other people. Um, 
so, so I think there's a lot of that. I think it's just more a case of just being aware of it, you know, within your information security policies and being in, in, in your privacy management and so forth and your compliance offices. I mean, in my experience, a lot of compliance offices are not technologically aware. They're very reliant on manual processes um, and manual intervention. And I think, you know, maybe there's a gap, there, a digital skills gap that maybe um, compliance officers need to be fully trained and, and, and brought up to speed on the consequences and, and the idea of, of how this data is moving and where it's coming from and, and what types of compliance issues should be there. Like with the plagiarism idea, you know, there are plagiarism checkers. I mean, you know, because in the, in, 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 in the um, academic uh, fields, you know, you, there are tools that you, you pump data through, you, you pump your text through it and it tells you if you're 80% the same as some other text out there. So I think I think it's a case of just having policies and, and sensible checkpoints on on governance. Um, I think the thing for me around AI that I'm very concerned about is with data quality. The point you, you touched on. Um, I think data quality has to be extended to include um, psychological bias. You know, so we you know we talk about data quality. Um, but does it include at the moment, and I'm this is a question maybe for you or Howard, like does does it at the moment data quality include checks for um, uh, by our own biases? Um, where even even if we have assisted learning, for example, um, do we have ways of making sure that we have a, an array of different people, different types of people, um, having some sort of inclusivity in, in that assisted learning? And are we making sure that our data sets um, are sourced in such a way that we, we balance the, the bias that's inherent in everything we humans generate. Um, so yeah, so that's a question for you, I think. Thanks. That's uh, uh, the, the, the compliance part, 100%, you're spot on. Um, there's so many things that just needs to be, you know, put in place um, to work around this and in this. With regards to psychological bias, you've got, I don't know, uh, I, 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 I honestly, I can't say um, with a project this big um, and, you know, like, and there has been so many things on the inter internet that ChatGPT didn't want to answer that question or that question about a politician and, and so forth. I, I actually ignored those items because of the bias that is possibly there. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how if you know anything about that. I would assume it it should and um, it should work like testing where you get any, everyone from the organization to test in general um, and all roles. So I would say, like you say, um, have people to train the models. They're from all backgrounds, roles, uh, levels, etc. Also, but no, I've got don't have an answer for that. Yeah, so so Caroline, what what is happening is more and more we are having to investigate our learning data or the the, the data that teaches the machine for inherent biases on how do we uh, select the data for learning? How do we choose the data sets and and how do we do the learning now? Um, what I, what I believe is happening now is that previously um, ChatGPT and that they were all looking at existing data that's on the internet, but now we we are enabling or allowing us to give it some of our own data and learn on our data. So there's certainly a governance process in terms of understanding or validating the data for biases. Um, and then it's the upfront work, it's the uh, ongoing check in terms of the error rate uh, that data quality looks at. And then it has to work with a feedback loop that, that allows people to complain and expect an, a, a right for justification or right to explanation, where a feedback loop comes in to say, um, well, you have to explain the decision you made and how you got there. And that's also have to be controlled by governance. So that's where that uh, putting the human back in the loop, especially if it's a very sensitive uh, thing like was raised here of not giving people loans, affecting loans, that that's a very that can have quite a negative effect on on a community. 
and you would have to in, enforce some level of can we explain why this person should get it and what the impact is from the community and then be able to feed that back into the learning. So you have to deal with this in multiple aspects. One is uh, validating your input data from a, from a bias point of view. And there are different ways on, on doing that bias analysis and segmenting the data. Um, and then you have the error rate in terms of the predictions. And then you have the community or the feedback loop that you should allow uh, anybody who's involved in, in engaging with that machine to provide the feedback and then you'd be monitoring it in that way. So you, you've got to put in several, you've got to put in several loops and protections here. 100% out, you, you, you're spot on there. Um, I think if we, there's, there's also going to be two different split here. The one will be purely technical. And when I say purely technical, I'm, I'm talking about Tour de France. In one of the mines, we did something where we looked for um, for things that the guy swallowed, so that was with x-rays. So, you know, it's that's purely technical things. It's yes or no. And then you get, like like you said, the, the more soft things, like what's my salary or, you know, the calculation for my leave days or, or something like that, which is but bit more you need feedback but yeah psychological bias I'm, I'm definitely going to read up on that i want to know also now know a bit bit more um but it's, i think it's it's all sorts of biases everything from cognitive bias to bias in the data in terms of uh, historical uh plans or, or, or any bias basically the governance people have to do an assessment um, in terms of where this the potential outcome is is going to cause problems. So, um, Caroline, there's a nice book by Dara O'Brien called Ethical uh, Enterprise Information Management, and he goes through a process of trying to uplift the ethical to a corporate ethics away from individuals, and then also ensuring that um, the feedback loop into the system is is appropriate now that in itself has has challenges because feedback uh, in terms of a digital persona can can get quite hectic pretty quickly so so th there's all sorts of things that people are trying to do to ensure that the machine receives appropriate feedback uh, and and can grow and benefit from it but this could also be done with you know, with people in the organization or external people in terms of uh, understanding how to evaluate certain decisions made and, and what the error rate is on those decisions. Yeah, no, that sounds good. Caroline, you've got your hands up. Yeah, I just, um, my worry is, is that the technology is going to move faster than most companies' compliance awareness. <laughs> So you're going to end up, you know, with the same situation we had the spreadsheets um, where suddenly everyone had a spreadsheet and suddenly everybody was, chunk, you know, crunching data um, and, and creating many apps in their spread, Excel spreadsheets <clears throat> with absolutely no appreciation for data management or data quality. And I'm just, you know, now we have artificial intelligence um, becoming more and more available. Um, and how much is that? You know, we, we, we're not we're, we're slow learners when it comes to this kind of thinking. You know, we're more like, oh, we've got a tool. We can use it. Let's go. You know, and it kind yeah. of creates an empowered workforce. Um, and it's, you know, we compliance or sort of lags behind a cat, you know. So I'm, I'm wondering, like, is, is there is there a way that, we can, oh, sorry, is there a way that we can effectively address the compliance, you know, almost reach the compliance community um, and have driven awareness training um, just to make sure that the the general work workforce are aware, and that, that this power, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. You know, like you need to actually slow down and think about it. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. You know, I think that. Sorry. Sorry. I think um, uh, OpenAI did something right there, even though if, if it was by investment. Um, Open AI GPT for for your for your data, your um, organizational data will only work if it's in Asia. 
finish. It will not you anything out of Asia won't work. Um, so you have to either load it on or integrate into it, but it needs to be either in a SQL in um, one of their blob storage, like what have you. So there, from that perspective, I think governance could be almost enforced easier. From but that even it is the IT or actually governance come more from business, but you have to have buy in there, but it can be better enforced. Um, but that's one of the items. Google's coming up with this. AWS is probably not far behind. They've been very quiet. Um, but yeah, sorry, Howard, you wanted to say something? No, I think that I think the that's certainly the case. And and there was another uh, comment by Bilash or Dash where. Uh, people are certainly looking at how do you train the machines with ethical, uh, you know, uh, the ethical knowledge and to be able to pick up some of these issues. So, so that's been worked on, but always at the same time, there's, we definitely have to uh, focus and continue on the training and allow people to, it's almost like that whistleblowing, uh, Caroline, where uh, somebody detects something, someone sees something, and then that whistleblowing is, is really important. Now, we need that whistleblowing to be happening internally and external whistleblowing feedback into, and then almost, some people call it social licensing, where, where you're constantly engaging with your customer, your social customer base, to see whether you are uh, you have the right license, you have the approval of society, of the community that you're doing uh, what's right. So that social licensing is also coming into play. Spot on. Is that everyone? Should I finish off? I've got five yeah. more, ten more slides. No, okay. I've got the, I have to, I, I always finish off with a tongue in cheek. Now, what I did is I I asked um, ChatGPT to write me a poem about it. But since since I'm now best friends with the Terminator, I asked him to read it. Um, so here we go. Where's, where's it? To divide one of our time, model trained on data, a creative paradigm. But in the realm of data management, it brings a change, and data architecture must adapt to its range. Generate outputs that are meaningful and true. Generative and requires data that is of high value. Data quality is paramount. Data management must ensure the data collected and stored is accurate and pure. Generative and requires data in great amounts. Data management must ensure it is processed and maintained. Data integration must be seamless and smooth for generative to access the data in its groove. Data modeling must be optimized for generative based needs. And data storage must be designed to accommodate its feet. Data processing requires resources in plenty. Data architecture must ensure it's utilized efficiently. Generates data that could contain sensitive information that must be managed through the governance reign. Data architecture must ensure that privacy is maintained. Governance policies are in place. Risks are constrained. Generative is a wonder of our time, but data architecture must adapt to its paradigm to ensure that the models generate outputs that are true. Data management and architecture must be optimized to know. So yeah, um, mm. I, I just need to phone him because he can't pronounce generative AI. Um, <laughs> I, I tried to write a different way, A dot I, uh, yeah, no, he couldn't. So I'll phone him tonight and just ask him to change that. Um, yeah, so that that's my story. Um, I don't know if, uh, if there's any other comments, questions, queries, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, how it's got my details, everyone in the team's got my details. Um, yeah, that's Thank me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think there was a last uh, question by Gaucher. Gaucher, I think you asked the question in the beginning. Have, does your, has your question been answered? Um, maybe not, uh, <laughs> but I think maybe we've run out of time. But but anyway, it's about the ethics. And, and and for me, the, the, the baseline, what I understand is, is if you can have no governance if you don't have ethics agreed with the business, um, because ethics is based on, well, let's say, societal ethics, because that's a very important or social ethics. So you get ethics um, 
I mean, for a, for a, for a, for for a blue biased, and you get ethics for a red biased. So 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 so, I think when this AI is, I mean, I've played a lot with it. Um, you need to, it needs to, well, basically, it needs to have ethics, and I don't think, well, kind kind of of a published ethics, which like uh, for example, Facebook or YouTube has. I'm not sure if they have ethics. Um, published, and I'm not sure why Microsoft is killing their ethics. So, I mean, if we all don't have ethics that we all agree upon, then it might be an issue. So, I think uh, for me, the H, the Chat GPT will will there's a potential for ethics to come in there. That's maybe I've not picked up, but I think that's a very important point for 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 going for, forward for everybody's safe use in in the Chat GPT world. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, just just a note on, on on the open AI service within um, within the Azure environment, um, and I have to admit I haven't read the entire thing. There is a clause. If it is if it is detected that this is going to be used for harm, it will the service will immediately shut down. So. Yeah, but it, sorry, can I just? So all mm -hmm. for who? All yeah, that's what who? I wanted to continue <laughs> now. <laughs> what, sorry, sorry. What's the definition of harm? It, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no stress. The definition of harm is now another thing. I did my, my first master's I did in multicultural project teams. And just to research what defines culture, what defines ethics, what I mean, that is that's also a rabbit hole to go through. Um, and then if you have a look at the big thing around this in education is that that's another webinar on its own. Um, what's ethical there? Can you just copy it into your report? Can you, you know, what, so there's there's a lot of ethical discussions and ethical in ethics in AI in its own is under a huge amount of pressure from a research perspective. Because I agree with that. 100%. What what is it? Because my ethics and you, your ethics might not be the same. That's precisely, um, that's where the bias comes in. Mm. Um, I mean, depends on what level the bias is, will depend on how far we can get the information out of, out of chat GPT. Because I think for now, if you look at biasness, it's very good for kids um, if they know what to search for. But if they put in the wrong words, I mean, then that thing should have been biased towards the the guy that's putting in the information kind of thing. Just something to think about. 100%, and that ties up with what Caroline said about um, the psychological bias where um, when you feed the test data, um, but also where you then go and, um, and, and do the assisted learning, you should have a wide variety of cultures, religions, or what have you, you know, to do that. Yeah, how practical it is? Yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my two cents. Thanks. Fantastic. Guys, I, I think we get to the end of the half hour. I think you I think it's uh, a great time to close the chat. Thanks for everybody. Um, and thank you, Karen, for for the discussion, and thank you for the the lesson. It's nice to see uh, what it's doing and where it's going, and for us to always be aware of what's happening, so we can keep on learning more about it. Part of the part of the awareness campaign. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thank you very much. Hope you have a wonderful evening. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Bye. Bye.